Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope the quick revision of this entry was just worth it. Now we are going to look into the different uh, decision algorithms that we have. It's not like only one algorithm. There are different ways to execute and decision tree. Okay. We have seen that decision tree is a supervised learning technique that can be used for both regression and classification tasks. But again, it is mostly preferred for your classification problems only. Okay. Sometimes it might uh, work exceptional, give some exceptional results in regression but most of the times it is preferred to be used for classification problems where there are internal nodes represent the features of the data set we have looked into some of the keywords key points that uh, are needed to be known for decision trees where internal nodes represents the feature of the data set branches represent the decision rules and each leaf node represents the outcome these are something that we had a quick recap on then we uh, there were two kinds of node. One was a leave node and the other was decision node. Decision nodes uh, were used to make decision and have multiple branches. Well, you see, this is this condition is the decision node and leave nodes are the output of those uh, decisions. Okay, so over here we have leaf nodes. Okay, these are leaf nodes and these are decision nodes. Now you might think that why it is called decision tree. It is called a decision tree because similar to a tree, it starts with the very root, root being the first phase. Okay. It starts from the root and which expands to further branches and construct a tree like structure. So we have a root in the top and from uh, below it, the branches grow and grow much further. Okay. Uh, there are various algorithms. Okay. It's not like we have only one algorithm. So here are the few of the most famous algorithms that we have. There's ID3 algorithm. Okay, we have this ID3 algorithm. We have C4.5, uh, then C5.0, and then the CART algorithm. So for this lecture of ours, we are going to use the CART algorithm. Okay, C-A-R-T. It stands for classification and regression tree algorithm. We have already implemented the regression part while we were learning decision tree regression. Now we are going to implement it using... Uh, for our classification task okay you can pause out the screen to uh, give a read about id3 c4.5 c5.0 okay and get a more hands-on uh, perspective descriptive perspective on these algorithms okay in a nutshell id3 what id3 is uh, it yields uh, at the end the categorical feature that yields the highest information gain okay we are going to talk about all of these what is the information gain what are uh, what are these uh, attribute selection measures? What are, what do we mean by this? Okay, we are going to talk about that. Don't worry. But uh, ID3, what it does is the, uh, at the end, the categorical feature that will yield the high, the largest information gain for the categorical target that will be uh, taken into account. Okay. And C4.5 uh, is like the successor of ID3. It, ha it had came just after that. And it just entails... Uh, expands the uh, broad meaning of ID3. Then we have C5.0. At the end, we have CART. Okay, these are the four which are quite famous. CART algorithm is very much similar to uh, C4.5. Okay, only that uh, it uh, supports numerical values too, numerical target values. C4.5 does not uh, does a very good a very good uh, transaction with numerical values, but uh, our CART algorithm, what it does, it does a very good job. It, it supports numerical target variables. That is for the regression task. Apart from that, all the other algorithm, ID3, C4.5, those do not support the regression task. Okay. CART construct binary trees. We have binary tree. That is, there can be only two nodes. Okay. Below a, a, a one node. Maximum of two nodes. Okay. Using the feature and threshold that yield the largest information gain at each node. Okay, so these were quite the few famous uh, algorithms that we have. So we are going to evaluate and go deeper into how the CART algorithm works. Okay. So we begin with that uh, root node, say S. So let's say S is the root node over here, which contains the complete data set. When you initialize, it will uh, contain the complete data set. Okay. Then 
we find the best attribute in the data set using ASM. What is ASM? ASM is the attribute selection measure. There are various uh, ASM. Okay, there are various ways to uh, find the best attribute. Okay, so we are going to talk about the attribute selection measures uh, in our next slide. But before that, let's just have a quick uh, look into how the decision tree algorithm works. So we take the complete data set, assign it to the root node. Okay, this is the root node. Okay, let's say we have three columns okay uh, day uh, and then rainy true or false and let's say humidity we have these three feature okay and after we pass uh, initially what we take we take the complete data set put it into the root node and then after uh, using some attribute selection method okay we get to know that the root node should be humidity so we assign humidity as our root node the next process is we divide the complete root node into subset that contains the possible values for the best attribute as i've told you that uh, what it does it gets the best attribute okay it will divide the complete root node into subsets that contain the possible values for the uh, best attribute that we have got in our case in our example it was humidity then we generate the decision tree node okay the node that will decide the deciding factor okay if uh, this is less than this then this should be moving on the uh, left hand side or if this is greater than this this should be moving in the right hand side okay depending on upon the decision we create the decision nodes okay which contains the best attributes after this we recursively make new decision tree using the subsets of the data set created in step number three. So we have the first, yeah, we have the first root node humidity. Okay. Then we get to know about the uh, leaf node that we have. So over here, we find it out that if humidity is greater than uh, less than 10, it will move into uh, this part. And if it is greater than uh, 10 it will move into this part then again over here it will check that if that uh, rainy if rainy is less than something less than say uh, rainy is not equal to 1 or not equal to yes it will uh, the player will won't play the game okay if rainy is less than uh, just the opposite of it then the guy will play this game okay so we will what we will do is we will fast the recursive function that will uh, take the step 3 and below of the uh, root node which we have it will build more decision trees and more decision uh, nodes okay we'll continue this process until a stage is reached where you uh, cannot further classify the nodes and call the final node as leaf node okay just if you could just recall what we have learned in the previous videos at the we have a uh, root node then we have some decision node if the decision node uh, gives out to more decision node if uh, we can uh, go further inside of it if not then the last nodes are the leaf nodes okay these are the decision nodes decision nodes and at the end we have the leaf node okay that's how the decision tree algorithm works in the decision tree for predicting the class of a given data set what the algorithm does is the algorithm starts from the root node of the tree the algorithm compares the values of the root attribute with the record that is the real data set okay that is uh, the record attribute okay from the real data set and based on the comparison follows the branch and jumps to the next node that's how the progression of decision tree grows upon that's all about decision tree uh, about the decision tree algorithm in our next uh, video we are going to look into some of the attribute selection measures okay um, some of the ways by which we can know that which is the best attribute